Hey guys, today is another 356 video. I'm excited about it. Should be a good one. I got all the chrome pieces back for my 356. These are all the original parts that I had re-chromed. And for the most part, it came out really nice. So now it's time to reassemble all the shiny pieces. And what I've been told is that the rear quarter windows are a bear. They're the hardest thing to do. Some say it's the hardest thing to do on a 356. So I'm gonna tackle that first. And I've been thinking about it. And of course I came up with um, a tool. So this piece is like a fixture. It's just made out of MDF. And I cut it out on the CNC machine, but you wouldn't have to. Basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow me to really clamp the frame in place because it takes a lot of pressure to be able to get this assembled with the seal and with the glass. Basically you gotta shove it all in and then these two pieces come together and then there's uh, two screws on top, two screws on the side. So a total of eight screws, you gotta try to get the screws in and fight with the rubber and so forth. So. Stay tuned, we'll uh, figure it out. I've never done this before. Uh, this is part of the creative process for me. I mean, even though this is a stock rebuild, it's basically how do you put it together after all these years? And there are some challenges, you know, there's rusty parts, there's broken screws, and so we'll get through it. Stay tuned. The screws come in from this direction. They're basically just these little countersunk screws. I'll replace those with some different ones, but those are the originals. And um, you know, this side has the equivalent holes. Some of these I had to drill out to remove them. Just making sure the seal has a nice fit here with the channel. I sanded off any sort of sharp, you know, flashing from the chrome shop. It feels very smooth. You can't, you know, cut your, your finger or anything on it. So this seal is fitting pretty nice. It's allowed to, you know, shift back and forth. As we put pressure on it, it's got some movability to it, which is great. This side here gets bunched up a little bit when there's no glass, but you know, that's normal. And then this is the seal profile. This is from International Mercantile. And you know, it fits in the, in the slot really well. It's a really nice fit. Obviously the glass goes in between there. I have a few sets of glass. This is the original glass, but it's got some bubbling problem. So it's safety glass, of course, but see how it's bubbled there? Uh, I'm going to use this as a practice piece. This is original Sigla glass. I'm going to start by putting the seal on the glass. Just check for the fit and see what it's like going around this tight corner here on the top. I guess this is the back of the car, but this glass really does spread the seal out quite a bit. So it's a little bit of a challenge to get this on here. Now, I have read some of the techniques on this. A lot of people say just to use soap and, and get this on. Um, I'm gonna fit it dry and then I want it to see how it's, see how it likes to buckle right there. Um, I feel like what needs to happen is it has to stretch out. So if I stretch this out and, and let the material um, bend around there, you need to kind of create extra space there at the top as it bends around so there's no wrinkles. I feel like <clears throat> it might be better to put this on dry so it really grips the glass. And then when it goes into the channel, we can put some lubricant on that. 
That's, that's what my thinking process is. I may change my mind, never know. Kit does come with a short section. That'll be for, for this piece here. So we got enough material. The other issue with the rubber is, you know, rubber always shrinks over time. So while we want to stretch it right here, we actually want to sort of compress it right here so we don't develop a gap in the corner. Like the window I took apart had a big gap there because eventually with heat and sun, the, the, the rubber will just shrink. I have prepped the frame with a little bit of 400 because there's a little bit of chrome flashing and old remnants inside that channel. And because we're gonna be putting you know, a lot of force on there, I feel like it's, it's beneficial to make sure it's real smooth. And I also might put a tiny little dab of super glue here on this corner because I have stretched it. I don't want it to relax anytime soon. And then when I created this shape on here, I basically just copied the shape of the frame, but I added space here because I thought that when you put the glass in, it was gonna expand it out. So I, I'm gonna use some small sticks to then sort of clamp it into position. So I left room for sticks out here on this edge. This side here fits really tight. This is just really difficult to put a clamp on here without it just sliding off because it's such an organic shape. So that's why I, I wanted to build this fixture to help clamp it. And then I want to put some lubricant on it before we stick it in the frame. And what I'm using is the silicone oil. This is not harmful to rubber. Um, it's potentially harmful to the glass because it could probably cause the bubbling that I already have here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on very lightly and I'm not going to allow it to touch the glass. It's only going to go between the rubber and the frame. I mean, you could use soap here too, but this to me just uh, is a little bit longer working time and it doesn't necessarily need to be cleaned up because the rubber will just absorb this and keep it healthy for a long period of time. So everything is in the channel. And so now I can basically just apply pressure. So I left this surface here so I can push against it or even clamp if I need to. But I'm just pushing with my hand so far and it's going, it's going in pretty well, starting to get tighter. Getting a little bit of oil coming out. So I don't want to get the oil on the glass, like I said. So we'll take off any of the excess oil. And it's basically just going right in there. So it kind of feels like it's bottomed out right now. And I'm pushing pretty hard. Now, glass is pretty strong when you're compressing it, but if you're bending it or you're, if you're pulling it, then that's where you gotta be careful. So uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna break the glass, but that's obviously a concern. Could push on the stick if I wanted to, to be a little bit safer, but These little cuts here in the wood are there so I can come by with a screwdriver and just screw that down. Trying to push this rubber this way as far as I can because I'm gonna ultimately trim it at the 45 there, but I wanna trim it in the most conservative way possible. So I'm just using hand pressure to kinda of work the seal towards the back. And then if you look back here as it goes around this tight bend, it's a little hard to see on this side because of the, the boss there for the latch, but there's no bunching or wrinkling in this area. Now it's time to put these angle brackets on. That's really what keeps the frame together. 
So there's a right angle that goes on this side and then there's a less than right angle goes there. The problem is, is on the lower side, these get pretty rusty. And so I got two screws that are rusted in there. So I'm gonna have to put my, my TIG welder on there and try to weld a little bead on there and then vice grip it out. There's one. There's two. Make sure all the holes are good. I'm gonna go to the hardware store and get some new screws. A little stiff right there, but yeah, once you work the threads free, this is good to go. Yeah, I got these screws, they're zinc plated M3 but they're Phillips and of course they don't have the slotted at the store. I could maybe order some, but in honesty, these are actually better, easier to use. So I'm gonna go with these. So in order for the holes to line up, it does push the rubber in a little bit right there. So I'm going to, you know, round the, the corner off just so that there's no interference with the bracket. That's all I took off there. I'm able to just lay them in there. And so that's all the way in. I'm just gonna back it off like two turns. And now the issue, once these brackets are installed, it's like pushing the seal out. So there's no way for this outer lip to be even with the chrome. It's, uh, we need to clearance the rubber seal. So here's, what it looks like again. So we just need to cut out a little relief for that bracket because this needs to be in the same space as the bracket. So we'll have to pull everything apart. That's the one side down, just notched it out. Probably do a little bit better on the other side. My blade did go a little deep on one of, one of those edges, but it's gonna be okay. These seals now fit nice up against the chrome. I think it'll only get better when we clamp it down. And for this one, I think I'm just gonna trial fit, make sure the holes are lining up without putting that last seal in, because I, I think we're almost there. Got my little magnet every time that happens. And this is where the clamping pressure really is important. So I have basically the, the two pieces of wood and I just have this metal washer and I'm just wedging the stuff in. And then as I slide it back, it creates a little bit more force just because of the way that I tapered that. So let's go for it. You don't want to cross thread these. So you kind of want to visually you know, line it up 
and it needs to be clamped more. So we'll just keep driving pieces in here to really clamp it down. These are plastic spreaders, so we won't scratch anything, but let's just go to town. There's quite a bit of pressure on that one. But let me show you what that did. It's exactly lined up. This one has a little bit of an offset, but I might have got the rubber trapped in there. Let me loosen it. So this miter here is, is pretty good. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking a feeler gauge and I'm, and I'm trying to stuff it in there. So I can go on the outer side, but it gets tight there on the inner. So the angle is just a little bit off. And this one here is about the same. It's a little bit loose on the outer side. Might want to remove just a little bit on the inside. And then on the outer surface, um, it's, it's pretty good. Same thing, and get the feeler gauge on the outer side. This is one and a half thousandths, it's really small. This one on this corner could use a little bit of work. But because these were chromed um, together, I have the other piece, the other side. I want to see if this side fits a little bit better. And then I will start, you know, massaging them to just fit just a little bit better. That's the nice thing about the fixtures. I can put it together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart a couple times. You see how mismatched this miter is? Um, even if I crank this screw down, it just doesn't, doesn't really want to line up. These angles are, are different. And then this side here is better, but it's way further open on the end than it is in the inside corner. So this one just doesn't seem to be the natural fit. So I'll save this one for the other side. And I'll go back to this one, which I know fits better. We'll just make a couple small adjustments, probably just on this piece. We can just, you know, this is brass. So if we take a little bit of chrome off right here, it won't be visible. Probably cringy to most of you, but um, you know, the chrome is really hard. So without like a big power tool, you're probably not just gonna sand right through it. This is not gonna corrode or peel or anything. Now it's easy to go on and off. Once this thing is clamped in, I can just keep messing around with it just a little bit right there in the middle, and then it's tight on the corner. So I'm gonna leave these two alone. Let's flip it and see what the other side's like. It's too bad, there's a little bit of that corner missing right there. The, you know, the platers are not very careful with this stuff, and so there's a chunk missing. Hopefully the rubber bit will kinda cover that or obscure some of that, but that joint is really, you know, as good as I can get on that one. Sometimes I think about, you know, how the factory would have done these. And I know if I was employed at the factory, this is what my idea would have been. I have some experience with this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I work in factories and design tooling for them as well. So I don't know. I don't know what they used, but if I worked there, this is what I would have done. Definitely would have made it out of something other than wood. Um, all the oils and stuff will break the wood down over time. Probably would have made this out of like HDPE, high density polyethylene. Something like that. On the short piece, I'm cutting the ends square. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting it in the, the actual piece. And then I'm just mitering just the little lip right there. So I think that'll work better. And I am, same thing, I'm kind of compressing this in length, trying to make the most conservative cut possible. And on this, I'm just taking these little scissors and I'm just nipping the corners. Just, just giving it the chamfer right at the very side that you can see. Everything else is embedded in there and I don't want it to interfere with the previous seal because that one does protrude out a little bit. So I'm just doing it the easiest possible way.
I'm ready to put this piece on, but I wanted to show you before, before I put it on why these cuts in the seal are important because without making those cuts, there would be nowhere for this bracket to be. So I've, I've cut it here, also here, and that just keeps it from like right here. See how it wants to bulge that out? Once this gets clamped down, it'll all come down tight and fit really nice. Pry tool. Still lined up. So if you're gonna break into a 356, please don't break this window. Break the side window because it's easier to replace. These are uh, tough. It shouldn't say final result because this glass is going to get replaced, but I have extra glass. I actually have two extra original glasses. This one um, I think can be fixed. I just didn't put it in because it needs to be thoroughly cleaned. It's got some scratches in it and I'm going to do some glass polish on it before I put it in the frame. So really this uh, was kind of like a practice run, but now that I have the method down and the tooling down, it won't take much effort to just swap out the glass, you know, undo the screws, put it back together. Now that the rubber's cut, the frames are fitted, everything should go much, much easier when I change the glass. I was afraid of breaking it, that's why I used the old stuff, but I was nowhere near breaking it. It was actually pretty good. But the corners, you know, I think came out great. You can see the miters and the rubber, everything is, you know, fitting, you know, as good as I could possibly expect. Hopefully it doesn't shrink over time. And then in this corner here, this tight kind of corner, I was worried about the rubber bunching up, but it never really did. I think stretching it out and super gluing it was probably the good move. No bunching, no wrinkles. It's just, uh, it just came out really nice. Corners are pretty good. Here's how it looks from the edge this way. Kind of curious about this outer seal and how well it goes in here. So, let's see if we can drop this in place. If this is too much work, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force it in here because I do need to take this out again. But it does look like the parts I was kind of worried about is this one corner. the chrome shop kind of messed the corner up a little bit. So it doesn't look like that's going to get obscured with the rubber. It's going to be evident. So I don't know. The process of putting this in doesn't look too bad. You just kind of need a soft object, you know, the piece of wood and just kind of roll it around. You know, it'll go in there pretty, pretty well. And then, you know, when this hinges, it creates a seal with the body. Great progress today. Uh, it's still got tons more chrome to do. And hopefully it's, like they said, this is probably the most difficult. I think second most difficult is the wind wing area and getting uh, the side windows in the doors. So fingers crossed, stay tuned. Thanks for being here.